Hi, my name is Dr. Nicole Caldwell, and I wanted to just make a quick video about one approach I've been using for some of my students for distance learning, and that's video modeling. So I'm going to kind of be talking about how I've used this strategy for some online learning for my students. So, um, oh, before I start, I always forget to introduce myself. If you don't know me, again, I'm Dr. Nicole Caldwell, and I'm an autism specialist and a tutor, and I work with kids at their homes on academics and some social and language skills and stuff like that. And I actually um, did my PhD research on video modeling. So it's a topic I really know a lot about and I really enjoy using with my students. So I'm excited to tell you a little bit about it today. So what is video modeling? It's more or less we're using video technology of some sort to provide a visual model of a skill or behavior that we want the child to learn or do. Um, you can think of it also as a video demonstration of a skill or behavior. And the example I have listed here is um, video photography tutorials. I also like to do photography for a hobby. So if you go to YouTube, there are any number of, you know, video tutorials and things of that nature that we all like to use. Those are examples of video modeling. So in other words, with video modeling, what we're doing is we're creating a video of ourselves, another adult, or another child doing whatever you want the students to do. You're making a video demonstration of it. So for distance learning, how we can use this is to upload the video that we make to whatever online class, classroom platform that we're using, and then students can view the video at home. And what we're doing with this strategy, I always like this. I don't remember exactly where I heard this phrase, show, don't tell. It may be from um, ABA speech with Rose. But what we're doing is with this approach, we're making the video to show the students what we want to do versus telling them. And I'm gonna talk a little bit next about why that's effective for kids with autism. So, we know that uh, many of our students with autism have a greater strength in their visual processing versus their auditory processing. So a lot of times that's the, er the learning area that they're strongest in is visuals. So that's what makes this strategy so great is because we're giving a visual model. Um, there's also some research to indicate that students with autism may have a particular interest in video viewing and technology. I guess what kid doesn't? Um, but there's been some research specifically to show that students with autism really like to engage with video viewing and that type of technology. Um, video modeling can also reduce stimulus over selectivity. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. But more or less what that means is with video modeling, we can zoom in our video on exactly what we want the child to see so that there aren't a lot of visual distractions around or anything. So the student is able to kind of you in on exactly what we want them to see and learn and do. So there's not a bunch of other stimuli in the environment being distracting. And video modeling can also for our students provide some reduced social demands. Um, that means like when you're not directly interacting with a person, you don't have to worry as much about social skills and social expectations and things of that nature. You're just watching the video, so you're kind of a little bit detached from it, so you can focus just on the learning and not worry about any social demands in the environment. There has also been some research to indicate that um, students with autism may have a preference for looking at photographs of people versus that in-person interaction. So video modeling in that it is kind of a, it's almost like a photo of someone. So that may be a kind of a preferred learning method for the student population as well. So those are some reasons why video modeling may be really helpful for some of our students with autism. So why can video modeling be helpful for distance learning specifically for these kids? So I think we all can probably figure out that many times our students with autism may not learn as well from sort of more traditional um, online learning models that we've been using like video lectures such as this one um, or like a written description of an assignment. These are all very language heavy type things. So that may not be as helpful for some students with autism. Um, but what we can do with video modeling is provide a really clear visual support. Um, a simple clear picture or video in this case, I'm using picture kind of metaphorically there. A simple clear, you know, picture or video of what the student is supposed to do. We can make it very simple, very straightforward. 
um, for the students to see. And this is a video clip. I probably won't play this video clip, but what this just shows is just my son going down a slide. It's very zoomed in on just the slides, so it's very clear on exactly what behavior he's doing in the video. So that's just an example of how we can make it short, simple, to the point, and clear in any video that we're showing. I do have some video examples that I'm going to show next, though. Okay, so how we can make videos for distance learning. Um, what we want to focus on is making a video really clear, really simple, to show a task that we want the student to complete. Like we talked about before with the stimulus over selectivity, what we can do with the video is zoom in so that there is a really clear view of the task with no distractions. So this will allow the student to focus specifically on that task without any distractions, um, which reduces that stimulus over selectivity problem. So in this video, I'm gonna click now to show you. It'll probably take a moment to load. Um, and I'm gonna make it large as well when it loads from YouTube. If I can blow it up. Okay, perfect. So what you're gonna see in this video is uh, making an art project. It's just a, a short video clip from this project. So what I have done is, and this is when I was very first starting to do this for distance learning, so if I was doing it again, I would rotate it um, so that it would, um, you would see it from a different angle, not this kind of unusual looking angle. But what you're seeing is a very zoomed in version of just the coloring of this popsicle stick for the project. So there's nothing else in the environment. You're not even seeing, this is my son working on this, you're not even seeing his face or anything to distract from what the specific task is, which is just coloring this popsicle stick at this part of the project. So that's just an example of how you can zoom in and have it be really, really clear. I'm gonna go back to our PowerPoint now. All right, so what I wanted to talk about next is what's really cool about this approach for distance learning is we can you know, make videos of our academic tasks and things we would normally be doing in the classroom for our students. But what's also really cool is that we could make videos of you know, fun and creative play activities, art projects, outdoor play opportunities, and, and things of this nature to help our students really engage with some developmentally appropriate and meaningful and fun learning opportunities. I feel like it's a great way to encourage outdoor and creative play in our students, um, the activities they can do at home. And I'm gonna play a video clip here. This is from a company called Tinker Garden who has um, some creative play classes that they offer for kids and they've been doing a series of at-home videos. So I'm just gonna show a few minutes or a few, probably just a few seconds of this clip of them demonstrating an activity. And so this is something you could show to a child at home as well or make a similar video um, yourself. I'm gonna switch it to full screen. And we'll just watch a short clip. So that's just one example of a fun little video you could make of a music activity or a song or anything like that that might be fun for the students to do at home. So I wanted to chat really quick about a couple things that you might wanna think about when you're making the video itself. Um, so what you wanna show in your video, the first thing, this sounds kind of like a technical definition here, but I'll just read it. A successful completion of the target behavior or task. 
So what this means is that you just want to show exactly in the video what you want the student to do. Make sure it's you know shown correctly and accurately um, with no prompts or anything of that nature. So some things you can show in your video, this can be any number of things in your video. You can make a role play scenario of a social situation. You could demonstrate the steps in a task such as brushing teeth. You could show how to do an academic task or a project, or you could make a video social narrative to tell a child about how to, what to expect for an upcoming social situation. These are all just a few examples of the many ways that you could use video modeling. Uh, the next thing you wanna consider when making your video is use a natural setting, like a realistic context for your video. Try to keep it, um, if, if your background or setting is important, try to make it a natural setting, like if you were making a video about shopping at the grocery store. It would be best to make that in a grocery store so that they would see the real background in the real world situation. Um, and in your video, you want, to, you want to minimize visual and audio distractions like we saw in the example with the coloring. It's very zoomed in, there's not a lot going on. And I like to, in that video, I like to mute the sound as well, because there is no sound in it other than, you know, some wind blowing or something, because I did that video on my patio. Um, so if you want to mute the video, if there's no talking in it, that will help reduce any audio distractions as well. If you had to provide the student any prompting or instructions in the video, you would want to just edit those out so that all they see is the correct, the correct scale or the correct behavior. You don't want any prompts or instructions to be in the video. And that is about all I had. So I wanted to share a couple additional resources about this topic. If you're interested in learning more about video modeling, I go into a lot more detail about it in the webinar that's linked there on the top of your screen, and I can give you these links. I'll probably put them in the comments on the video as well, so you can click them easily. Um, so there's that information for you if you want more in depth about how to use video modeling, what to put in your video, different types of video modeling, and some stuff from my research study that I did about video modeling, it'll all be in that webinar. The second item on that list there, is a link to the Tinker Garden YouTube channel where they have a bunch of these uh, creative activity, you know, fun play videos and stuff on there. The link, the link I could find for their channel was kind of long, so it may be easier just if you go to YouTube, just type Tinker Garden into the search box and you'll find their channel really easily. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the next two are a couple of great links from a website called The Autism Helper, and they've been sending out some blog posts specifically about how to do distance learning and e-learning for students with autism. So those are a couple really great links to check out. And the last one there you'll see is my website, autismhomeschoolsuccess.com. I have a bunch of free resources on my site for um, a lot of different topics, not just video modeling. So you can check that out as well. And that's all I have for this presentation. I really wanna thank you so much for your time. And if you have questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments or send me a message. I love helping. And I'm happy to answer any questions about this topic that you have. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.